The following program is brought to you by Caltech. You suddenly awaken on Saturday morning and glance over at the clock. It's 4 a.m. You think, it's so early. What could have roused me? Seconds later, the answer becomes clear. Your bed rumbles slightly, just like a mild turbulence in an airplane or a light massaging chair. You think, did I imagine that? I should probably get more sleep. But the vibration continues and increases in ferocity. You glance over at your bookshelves. The books are becoming Mexican jumping beans, bouncing and rattling around, <laughs> falling themselves onto the floor. The lights on the ceiling begin to flicker and swing violently. You jump out of bed through your crumbling room as, wind, as uh, pictures fall off the walls and furniture hops around. The whole world is bouncing. You dive underneath your desk and hang on. And as you do, you manage a glance outside. The highway outside of your house seems liquid, rippling like waves on a pond. You hang on. 20 seconds later, the shaking stops. You get up. You and your house have survived. But as you gaze out onto the neighborhood that used to be outside your window, you see total destruction. The highway has collapsed, crushing cars in the process. Houses lay waste, crumbled to the ground. Gas lines ruptured, flaming, spreading fire to the surrounding areas. The water mains that are broken won't be helpful in the days ahead, and the severed transportation lines will offer no rescue. The nightmare of the earthquake has only just begun. This is what it feels like to live through a major earthquake. As recent as 2011, the Tohoku Oki earthquake in Japan caused an estimated $250 billion of damage and 16,000 deaths. 16,000. And you're probably thinking right now, oh, I live in the United States. That's not going to happen here. But just know that the Los Angeles area is currently overdue for an earthquake seismologists are calling the big one that could feasibly kill thousands. Is this the price we must pay for living in tectonically active areas? Is there anything we can do to mitigate the risk of earthquakes? There is, and it involves triggering the very earthquakes we wish to avoid. Now, you're probably thinking, I didn't even know we could trigger earthquakes. There's no way that's going to help us actually prevent them. But humans are currently capable of this seemingly impossible wizardry. The ground beneath our feet is constantly in a state of stress. Tectonic plates grind against each other, building up stress. Think about it like catching your backpack in a doorway. You, you grab the backpack and pull and pull and pull until, boom, the bag slides through and hits you in the face. The same is with tectonic plates. The plates grind up against each other, pushing and grinding, constantly increasing stress until, boom, we have an earthquake. Humans can influence this cycle through the use of fluids. It's kind of like squirting some WD-40 into the fault and letting it slide a little more easily. What's actually happening is the fluid is pushing the walls of the fault to the side, relieving some of the pressure and allowing the, the fault to slide more easily. We've already drilled giant wells miles underneath the Earth's crust that allow us to inject fluid at a high pressure down into the Earth. And these wells can cause earthquakes in a couple of different ways. The first way is through hydrofracturing. You've probably heard of this. It's a way to get natural gas out of shale in the ground. Basically, the well injects into the ground, fractures the intact rock, and causes sort of a miniature fault system on which it induces earthquakes or triggers earthquakes. These are small. It's called necessarily a swarm of earthquakes. It's magnitude ones or twos usually. If you were standing on top, you probably wouldn't even feel it. But if we take that same well and we put it on a natural fault, we can induce much larger events. In fact, well, last year in Oklahoma, there was a magnitude 4.8 earthquake from an induced well. Now, for those of you that aren't as familiar with the magnitude scale, 4.8 is enough to knock some pictures off walls, rattle a few houses, knock down some poorly made sheds. So these can be a little bit scary. But the silver lining to this is we may be able to use this as a tool to prevent the even bigger, devastating, big one events I was talking about. Everybody needs a little stress relief. And the Earth is no different. 
But it doesn't matter if the Earth has its stress relieved in several thousand small events or in one large devastating event. The idea here would be to take some of these wells and induce the several thousand small events to prevent the one big devastating event from happening. We can imagine a future where fault lines are lined with wells constantly injecting fluid into the ground, gently massaging the stress out of the earth. Perhaps someday you'll be able to sleep in your home in Los Angeles, and when you wake up and glance at the clock and see it's 4 a.m., you won't be waking up to a crumbling house. You'll be waking up to the snoring person beside you. <laughs> Thank you.